Hi guys, it's Hatch Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I hope this is take 20 due to the damn bird. Anyway, I won't ramble too much because we've got a lot to get through on this video. There's a lot to talk about, there's a lot I want to say, but today I'm doing a spotlight on Strangers Perfumery from Thailand, as well as at the end I'm going to talk a little bit about Prin's other line. He's the perfumer behind this. His other line is called Prisana, Parfums Prisana, and I want to just get straight into it because there's a lot, so grab a chair, get comfortable, because I'm going to be talking for a while about all of these perfumes. So, Strangers Perfumery, this is a brand that I feel like there's a lot of buzz about this brand in the fragrance community, at least to my knowledge. I hear about it all the time, a lot of people are chitter-chattering about it, and I am lucky enough to have smelled all of them and own some of them, so I wanted to do a great spotlight uh, for Prin. Prin Lomros is the guy behind this brand. I've had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times. A lovely, gentle, charismatic guy whose main passion in life is film. He has a master's degree in film and I think filmmaking and he also teaches in Bangkok. He teaches filmmaking. So this is a big deal for him. He also loves perfume, obviously. So He's created a fragrance line called Strangers Perfumery. They're all based on one of three things. Films, obviously, goes without saying. The second thing is Thailand, because that's where Prince from. Why not create fragrances based on your homeland? And the third one is his travels around the world. He travels a lot and is very cool and very nice. And I've wanted to do this video as a big thank you and shout out to him. So the reason the line is called Strangers Perfumery, uh, the reason is, is because Prin as a person usually likes to create things that are very oriental, very opulent, rich, exotic ingredients, huge note lists, which are what Prisana is, the perfumes I'll talk about later in the video. So these perfumes, he says, are strangers in him. They're things that he wouldn't normally create, and I love that. So it's him kind of branching out of himself as a perfumer to create something that's out of his comfort zone, at the same time creating things that are still niche smelling, but wearable and affordable for Thai people and the rest of the world, which I think is yay. Well done, Prin. There's a lot to get through. So I'm just gonna, as always with a spotlight, if you've never watched a spotlight of mine before, it's a brief overview. It's not, this one isn't a first impressions because I work and smell these perfumes every day. So it would be a tiny bit more in depth, but there are quite a few, so I don't want to talk massively long about each one. I've divided them into mini sections and I'm just going to dive right in. So, here we go. So the first three I wanna talk about are the three that are based on his travels. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Cigar Rum. This is the one that gets quite a lot of attention because it was an Art and Olfaction Awards finalist a couple of years ago. And this is, I'm not sure if Prin has been to the Caribbean, but this is all about the Caribbean. This is about drinking cocktails in the Caribbean, smoking a cigar, drinking beautiful rum. And I love this one. I don't think it won the award, Prin, correct me if I'm wrong but it was a contender and this one's so great this is a boozy fragrance that feels like rum raisin ice cream take away the ice cream leave in the rum raisin part of it this is definitely that kind of candied raisiny type smell with a beautiful almost spicy tobacco and a boozy note and i can see why people love this it almost goes to like a chocolatey place when you smell it and I love it. I definitely want to get a bottle of this in my collection. I also have a little bit of insight. I spoke to Prin today and he told me a little bit of exciting news about what his plans are so I'll talk about that at the end but for now we're going to talk about the perfume. So cigar rum, Caribbean, smoking a cigar on a beach. 
just it's gourmand in a beautiful way this one I can't wait to wear this one in winter a lot more so I'm gonna give you the note list for these as well just so you can get an idea so this is mandarin rum raisin rum sorry raisins dried fruit ylang ylang tobacco cinnamon seaweed labdanum amber oakwood vetiver and patchouli I'm gonna not skim over them too quickly but we've got a lot to talk about so mm. I don't want to rush, but I also don't want to keep you here for too long. I get bored of the sound of my own voice very quickly, believe me. So I have a couple of favourites within this line and Prisana. I have, I think, four favourites and I'll mention them as I go. This next one is a favourite of mine. It's called Scotch Peat. And this one is about Prince travels to Scotland. He actually gifted me a bottle of it. The bottles are so cute. They're 30 mils. Prin wanted to create a niche fragrance line for Thai people. He wanted to create a fragrance line that they could afford and that was somewhat easy to wear. So that's such a cute thing. You know, he said a lot of people in Thailand want to wear niche perfume, but they can't afford the super expensive stuff. So he wanted to be the first person to just say, hey, I've got something you can wear right here. So he made stuff. So. Scotch Peat is definitely in my top four out of this whole bunch of perfumes. I love this one. It is, uh, one second, I've lost it already. I'm going out of my mind. This one is Artemisia Cassia Dried Fruits Licorice Malted Barley Lavender Absolute Peat, obviously. He wanted to create this earthy tone. Um, the oak barrels that you get in Scotland that, that harvest, not harvest, ferment whiskey or mature whiskey, spruce, honey, leather, um, oak barrels, cade, white chocolate, hay, Prin likes hay. There's a couple of notes that I can tell that he favours and hay is one of them. And Scotch peat to me is lovely. It kind of smells like, this is not a detriment or anything, but it reminds me of something that I would, that I've smelled in Lush before. It feels a bit lushy, this one. Super earthy sweet tones and a tiny bit spicy and it feels beautifully woody as well it's like a mixture of lots of woods together but yeah it feels to me kind of like Christmassy I don't know maybe it's some kind of spice that's going on in here what spices are in here let's have a look there are none in here but it feels spicy to me gently honeyed just this one is an earthy perfume lover's dream. I love it. So the next one is called Sangre Dolce. And I'm going to have to be frank and honest. This is the one I find the most challenging to wear. And when I tell you the note lists, you might see, note list, you might see why. This is not my favourite, but I appreciate what Prim was going for with this. Sorry, I'm going to have itchy nose. It's just a given when you watch an outro mono video. This has got a lot of notes in it that when put together, create something that I find difficult to wear. So this is Sangre Dolce, it's about Spain, it's about sangria, it's about warmth, and I've always struggled with anything that has wine in it. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Wine's my favorite drink. But wine in perfume for me is sometimes an issue, and the notes for this one are sangria, rose water, strawberry, brown sugar, Honey, cinnamon, tobacco, uh, a couple of other things, fruity, but then it's got maple syrup and civet. So this one is, it smells kind of like an alcoholic burnt sugar type smell with kind of indolic florals. And maple syrup is this added facet of it that I don't know, it's very unusual. It's, it's a very interesting take on a gourmand, I would say. I really appreciate what he's done here. Personally, for me, I don't like or wear this one, but if you like your gourmands with a boozy, honeyed, floral maple syrup twist, this one might be the one for you. And if you're Spanish, if you like Spain and you like sangria, it's almost like the smell of sangria with dessert added in, it, like a maple syrup honey thing. The civet is the really interesting twist here because it just makes it 
an animalic sangria dessert. I don't know, it's a very interesting one for sure. Not my favourite and my most challenging one to wear, but appreciate it for sure. So the next two are two of the newer fragrances that Prin has released. He calls it the 24-7 collection. He wanted to create fragrances based on Thailand that he feels can be worn on any occasion, all day, every day, casual. So one of these fragrances gets so much attention, a lot of attention. It's called Salted Green Mango. I've heard people buzzing about it in forums and communities, and why would you not? It sounds great. It's a, The name alone is a fruity fragrance that doesn't sound like it's sweet, so it's a new take. And Prin told me that in Thailand, they eat this particular type of mango that's really bitter and they put salt on it, or it's very sweet and they put salt on it, I'm not sure. Uh, but this smells very unique, this one. It's green mango, bitter orange, Pettigrain, lime, bergamot, elemi, pineapple, star gooseberry, which I had to look up. There is a gooseberry fruit that's got five little sections to it. It's the cutest little thing. I want to try one. Um, chili, they put chili on this mango as well. Rose, sandalwood, guava leaf, vetiver, salt, accord, and seaweed. So this one on paper and on paper sounds and smells amazing it's definitely super salty it's almost like when you smell it you can taste the salt in it but there's this bitter green fruity element to it as well which i think is fantastic i love this one this is one that i want to get in my collection also because it's very unique a lot of the things i don't smell but i can smell a citrusiness i can smell a bitter green fruity Thing, and I can almost taste and feel salt in my mouth when I smell it. But it's a good departure from a fruity that isn't covered in sugar. So I love this one, thumbs up. Just trying to keep myself organized before I lose track of everything I'm doing. Yes, this is blank. So the next one based on Thailand and in the 24 seven collection is called Arun Sawat. If you've been to Thailand, you will know that that means good morning in Thai. I miss Thailand so much. This is lovely. This one is notes of golden mango, uh, marion plum, pomelo, orange blossom, bergamot, passion fruit, tuberose, gardenia, incense, myrrh, rose, amber, sandalwood, and mandarin. This one is really interesting because at first it feels like it's gonna be a citrus, but not a boring citrus. This isn't just bergamot. This isn't just lemon. It's, a, it's almost like a powdery citrus at first, which is, it's smooth almost, and it's a real gentle citrus. He's managed to create something that, it's almost like the citruses have a blanket over them. And what happens when it dries on my skin, because I've worn this one quite a few times this summer, is the florals that reveal, feel kind of like mimosa a little bit. It's that gentle, dusky, sweet sort of floral smell that feels yellow, if I'm gonna put a color to it. It's just happy, it's a real happy fragrance, and I would happily say good morning to this and spray it on every day. It's really, really cool, I like this one too. I know, we're gonna move on because we've got a lot to talk about. So the next one on the list, to my nose, is definitely the most abstract and kind of out of the box and strange perfume. And this one is actually based on a film. It's called Fum Ma Po, which means smoke my skin. And it's based on a really old French film called Weekend. And I looked up this film and I'm really desperate to watch it because it seems absolutely chaotic. It's about a couple who secretly plan to murder each other but neither one knows. But besides that, they take a journey from industrial Paris out to the countryside to her mother's estate or her father's estate or her grandparents' estate in the hopes of killing them to inherit all of the money from the estate. So it's a very murderous carnage film. But what Prin tried to create in this one is the smell of industrialness with a touch of countryside. So he wants it to smell like pollution gasoline, glue, 
Uh, there's Galbanum in here, which is the countryside feeling part. This is really odd. I've not smelled a perfume like this before, which is kind of fantastic and exciting at the same time. So it's a new wave cinema, he says here. 1967 it came out. The notes are Styrax, Iranian Galbanum, Tar, Tobacco, Vetiver, Cypress, Cedarwood, Virginia, uh, Virginian Cedarwood, sorry, Glue, Leather and Gasoline. He also mentions that he wanted it to smell like uh, the smell of cigarettes on your fingers after you've had a cigarette, which to some people is probably revolting, but it smells super sharp. It smells astringent and I get the whole kind of paint glue thing from it. But it's not unpleasant. It doesn't smell like something that's so out there, it's unwearable. And I've smelled things that are in this theme before that just you don't, you don't want to smell like. The added thing of galbanum and something kind of almost crisp and floral makes it wearable to me. And I have tried this on my skin quite a few times and the dry down reveals a tar-like note. It smells like tar and something kind of dirty smoky so yeah this one's a standout as something extremely different from everything else so one to know if you like something just out of the box so the next one is called les mauvais garçons i'm gonna butcher the french language i remember prin telling me about a friend he has in paris who's a really a real bad boy that inspired him to make this fragrance but it's also a film as well so it's kind of a double meaning this one to him it's french new wave which i think might be one of his favorite styles 50s no it's not hold on a second i've got notes here sorry there's a lot to get through i have to reference some things uh he's am it says he's amazed at uh, french new wave rebellion so uh so this is basically a, a, a fougere that's what he's going for. And the notes are hay, absolute, um, elemi, uh, mate, or is it mate? It's the type of tea, right? Elemi, pettigrain, galbanum, lavender, clary sage, orris butter, carrot seed, coumarin, frankincense, tobacco, vanilla, sandalwood, oak moss, and tea. So this is Prince take on a fougere, and I really like it. The main thing here I smell is the coumarin uh, hay-like element, that sweet hay sort of smell. But the fougere of this is soft. This is a lovely kind of almost gentlemanly fougere that isn't so focused on lavender. This is more about the coumarin, coumarin or coumarin hay, softly herbal and really sweet. I haven't seen the film or anything in this kind of genre before, but I like that he's tied it to 50s to 70s men fougere structure. I get what he's going for, and this is Prince Tape. He says the scent is based on smoky tea, hay and tobacco, and iris, green elements from pettigrain and galbanum, and yes, incense and light vanilla add complexity. Here come the bad boys. I think Le Mauvais Garçon is the, the bad boys, so he made a fougere for the bad boys out there, and I'm a fan. So the next one's a little bit of a wild card because it's not really based on a film or Prince Travels. So this, was what, this is why it was kind of separate from the others. It's called SM Cafe. SM as in sadomasochism. He says, imagine if the Marquise de Sade read Fifty Shades of Grey and then opened a coffee shop <laughs> where you could whip your lover while drinking coffee. And that's what SM Cafe is. Prin also has a favour for a very strong coffee note in perfumes. There's two or three that I haven't spoken about yet that do have that super strong espresso note. So SM Cafe is Coffee Absolute Russian Leather. He wanted it to be leather because of the Marquis de Sade reference. Javanol, lavender, amber, tobacco, cedarwood atlas, tonka, beeswax, maraschino, cherry, patchouli, cashmere, and rose. I'm kind of skimming through the notes here because some of them have very long note lists. So he wanted it to be coffee shop aroma, leather, whips, and kind of a fruitiness. 
I'm not sure why the cherry's in there. Maybe it's about, you know, popping your cherry. <laughs> I'm not sure. But this one is, I've worn this and the opening of it is so coffee. It feels like you're wearing an espresso, but then it brings in gourmand elements and it actually dries down to something quite oody. It goes super, super woody in the base. And I like it, it's sharp coffee. It's, it's like if you added woody sharp notes to a cup of coffee and then splashed it on your skin. It's really cool. The leather isn't something that comes through straight away, but when you smell it more, it's it's almost like it's got something from through my paw in it. It's got that strong kind of oh, punch to the nose. So the next one is a little bit of a special one. I'm gonna have to do a shameless plug. I am sorry. Prin made a exclusive perfume for Bloom Perfumery in London and it's one that is based on movies. It's called Wicked John and it's based on John Wick from the John Wick movies, which admittedly I have never seen any of them. Maybe I should, but this one is great. This one is decidedly masculine. So this is, I, I think it's the most masculine fragrance I've smelled from any perfume by Prin. This is like a gentleman's cologne with gunpowder. There is an earthiness in here. You can feel the same earthiness that you get from Scotch Pete. So it's almost like a classic men's aftershave has been buried in earth. It's really interesting. It's metallic as well. Uh, the notes are gunpowder, leather, atlas cedar, metallic notes, oris, tobacco, rose, damp earth, elemy, gunpowder, hay, ink and lavender. So it feels kind of fougere kind of barbershop-y, but with this earthy twist that gives it so much depth and character. And it's kind of clean as well at the same time. It feels like clean man with metallic gunpowder and earth and herbal lavender. It's interesting for sure. So this one's only available at Bloom Perfumery in London. So if you're a fan of Prien and you want to get it, go and get it there. Shameless plug. All right, quick break and energy up. <laughs> Sniffing becomes tiring. So the next five are Prinned. It's another little section of his collections that he has. And these are all LGBTQIA film based. So the first two I'm going to talk about are from the same film. There's a film called Call Me By Your Name. If you haven't watched it, watch it. It's amazing. It's very emotional. I think Prin said that it's his favourite film ever. It's a film set in Italy and it's a love story between an adolescent guy and an older guy. Not weird or anything. Uh, it's a very beautifully shot film. There's not even much dialogue in the film, really. It's more about emotion. So one of them is called Oliver. This one he said is the best seller in Thailand. People in Thailand love this fragrance. He wanted to create a fragrance based around this character who is this kind of dapper older gentleman that always has this clean shirt on and it's a very beautiful fragrance. It has a lot of notes, this one. But the theme of it is Italy, it's coast, it's citrusy, and he wanted to create a base note of clean t-shirt and linen and just a very well put together clean fragrance, which to me is completely unisex. I'll list a few of the notes, but it's very long. So it's apricot, quince, orange, mojito, magnolia, coriander, sea salt, patchouli, clean shirt is the main focus here, oak moss, oh gosh, grape leaves. He went full on Italy by the coast. And this is so pleasant, this one. It's one of those kind of uplifting fragrances that makes you feel a bit happy. I can see why people in Thailand like this. Thailand is, you know, every time I've been there, stifling heat, really cloying and 
this is really gorgeous. I feel this clean shirt thing for sure. It's not super laundry. It's citruses and a clean shirt feeling and really bright, airy florals, but it's not a floral fragrance, but it's got a lovely clean floral element to it that complements this clean t-shirt thing so well. And citruses that, again, are not boring. It's not just bergamot or anything like that. It's, it's such a lovely combination of citruses that are kind of smooth as opposed to being sharp and as a citrus, I applaud Prin again for doing something citrusy that isn't run of the mill. So the other one, the the kind of companion scent to this is called San Clemente, which is where the film takes place. Fun fact about this fragrance, San Clemente and Oliver have exactly the same notes, so Prin tells us. However, they smell completely different and it shows you that if you balance things in a different way, you can create an entirely different perfume. He said that the notes in this perfume, each of them represents a memory shared between uh, Oliver and, I totally forget the name of the, of the boy in the film. <laughs> Research. Is it Hugo? I don't know. I forget his name. Uh, but so this has got, every note represents a memory they share together. So it has espresso, there's a little coffee element in here again, red wine, cherry. Is it about that same thing, Prin? Only you know. Uh, then you have fireplace, um, soil, oak moss, clean shirt again. So it has that kind of thing going on. This is much deeper though. This is... This is more focused on earthy notes, and this one, when I've worn it, has dried down to a super vetiver, this one. Vetiver is the, the note that prevails when you wear it, and it dries down. But this is kind of like a fruity coffee at first, with a, a kind of strike of, of cleanliness going through it that dries down to a vetiver, so I'll leave that one there. Interesting that you can, you know, it just shows you what perfumers can do when they mix around ingredients and switch it around. It's, it's just interesting to me. So I hope it's interesting to you as well. <laughs> so the next one is a favorite of mine. It's my third favorite. I have three favorites. I said four, I have three. Scotch Pete is one. This one is another one. This one is called Virginia and it's about Virginia Woolf. It's about the hours, the film with Meryl Streep, but this one is amazing to me because Prin is from a tropical country. He's from a place that doesn't smell like this at all. And he wanted to capture the scent of English country garden. And he did it perfectly. I love this one. This is green. This smells like meadow flowers. I'll give you the note list because it's beautiful. It's wildflowers, bluebell, uh, fig leaf, artemisia, grass, galbanum, dandelion, carrot seeds, angelica, gardenia, elderflower, chrysanthemum, cypress, oak moss, uh, just so much stuff. There's a lot of notes in here. This really smells like my friend Jamie's wedding, <laughs> which isn't a good reference for you, but on the morning of her wedding, she went out with her sisters and picked all of these wild meadow flowers and then they put those on the table. She's very kitsch and cool and wanted it to be very naturalistic. This is green. It's slightly aquatic, but it feels like you're smelling a bouquet of wildflowers, dandelions and elderflower cordial kind of smell. This to me is so impressive for somebody that can create something like this that isn't from England, it's genius. This is so gorgeous. I've worn this so much in springtime and it couldn't be more perfect. And I'm gonna leave it there. This is a favorite and yay for you, Prin. You did that. So the second to last one before we move on to Prasanna is called Gorge. Yeah, I said that, didn't I? This one's based on a film called God's Own Country, which I've never seen. It's set in Yorkshire and it's a love story again between two guys. 
Prim wanted to create the feeling of the hills and the dales, I guess. This one is coriander, black pepper, whiskey, clove. Anyone that's seen the film might be able to chime in a little bit more. But he wanted to create the feeling of Yorkshire. This is tobacco again, uh, hay again, patchouli, peat accord. So <clears throat> to me, this feels like it's tied to scotch peat a little bit. But this one's fresher and it feels woodier and it's a little bit rougher, this one. This one's really hard to pinpoint. There's a lot of notes in here that I, I don't feel, but I'm sure they add some kind of dimension to it. But to me, it mainly smells earthy in a kind of patchouli way with, is there tobacco there as well? And there's this sweet hay again. This is one that I really need to try more. I haven't worn this one that much given, but it is a spotlight. So this one I'm gonna to get to know more. So we're gonna move on to the last one of Strangers Perfumery. So this one's called Burning Ben and it's a fragrance that's inspired by a Korean art house film called Burning. The story is very loosely, because I haven't, I haven't watched it before, it's about guy meets girl, girl meets other guy, guy gets jealous of guy, guy kills guy. This is another coffee um, fragrance. This is where he said there's a scene in the film between the main character and the antagonist. They meet in a coffee shop and it's quite poignant. I need to watch these films, but this is kind of close to SM Cafe, but it's much woodier, it's lighter, there are no gourmand, gourmand elements in this one. Uh, let me tell you the notes, this is espresso again, plum, dark chocolate, hazelnut, cognac, cherry, saffron, beeswax, tobacco, uh, a burning tyre accord, hay, absolute, hay is one of Prince's favourites, I already said that, patchouli amber and javanol, so this feels like SM Cafe, but a little bit lighter and less gourmand. And now I'm going to move on to Parfums Prasanna because this is where I get really, really excited. So let's talk about Parfums Prasanna. Prasanna is an amalgamation of Prin and his sister's name. And if strangers are Prin showing his more playful side and his passion for film and his travel. This is Prin being serious and this is him doing what he absolutely loves. He told me that these perfumes are very important to him, as I'm sure all of them are, but some of these were years in the making. There's only three in the line, but I'm gonna talk about the three from Prasanna and I'm really excited because they're spectacular. So I'm gonna start with my favorite. Prin gifted me this, it's called Manishtana, or Manishtana. It says, why is tonight different from all other nights? And it's about a song as well. The inspiration and background of it is kind of lost on me, uh, but it's about sacredness, and this is my favorite perfume from Prin from any of these 14 or 17 that are here that I've been waffling on about for so long. This one is one that I said to Prin, when he showed me it in front of me, I said, this is something that I need. I am an incense lover. I love perfumes that contain incense and I have many. A lot of them are based around Catholic incense. A lot of them are church. A lot of them are frankincense. A lot of them are kind of smoky or cold incense. I have not smelled an incense perfume like this ever. This is full on temple. This is Southeast Asia temple incense with tons of spice. It's a lot of nutmeg in here and it has this huge leathery undertone as well. So it's super dark, super complex. I'm in love with this. I'm going to wear this a whole bunch in winter. Let me just give you the notes one second. Prince says it represents the Middle Eastern vibe. 
Um, I, I don't feel like that at all. I mean, I've never been to the Middle East, but this is different from any incense I've smelled. So, this is saffron, amber, aldehydes, frankincense, myrrh, rose, nutmeg, pink pepper, caraway, black pepper, cardamom, cumin, labdanum, castorium, sandalwood, patchouli, smoke, leather, clove, and allspice. So, this is Prin really ramping up the ingredients, the intensity, the rarity of what he puts in, and this to me is the spiciest temple incense I've ever smelled. It's kind of dry in places when you wear it. You've got this added depth and darkness from leather, and to me this is a masterpiece, and Prin, it took you a long time to make it, and there are people that appreciate this. I know that for sure because I've showed it to a lot of people. Absolutely beautiful and this is going on my top 20 fragrances I've ever smelled. So, done. The second one from Prisana is one that I think is probably the most important perfume that Prin has ever made after speaking to him today. It's called Mandarava and he made this in honour of his grandmother, who sadly passed away. And this is his vision of heaven, and how heaven smells, and where she's waiting for him. And this one has, apart from Oliver from Strangers, this has one of the most extensive note lists I've seen in a perfume, and especially from this brand, or from Prin. This is one that at first I didn't really like that much and I've grown and grown and grown to appreciate how complex and beautiful it is. This has a lot of very precious ingredients from India. So, mostly how this smells is champaka flower. I've never smelled a perfume that smells like champaka as much as this. If you want to know what champaka smells like, very precious and expensive ingredient smell this perfume. There's also Indian Jasmine in here, I can smell it a whole bunch. And there's also real Mysore Sandalwood in here, which, again, super precious. But this has a lot of stuff going on. It's Bodhi Tree, don't know what that is. <sighs> I wish I did, but this note list is very overwhelming. Uh, Sandbach Jasmine, Himalayan Champaka Flowers, Ylang Ylang, Marigold from India, Frankincense, myrrh, rose, lotus, cinnamon, civet, nagamotha, which is cypriol, rue kus, ebony, Indian oud from Assam, Indonesian patchouli, oak moss, gardenia, coriander, tolu balm, coriander, tolu balm, Siamese benzoin, aldehydes, cumin seeds, amber, tuberose, and ash. If that is not a note list to excite you, I don't know what is. I mean, I don't know. If you like citruses, maybe that's not your thing, but when I read the note list of this, I was absolutely obsessed. And this has got a vintage feel. The aldehydes bring this down to something that feels throwback. I feel like if it was a thing, this would be what Indian people smelled like in the 70s. It's incredible. At first, I didn't quite understand it, but the more I've worn it, I've just... It's opened my mind up to something that has so many beautiful Indian ingredients in it, and I'm, uh, I'm obsessed with India. <laughs> so, it's stunning. Beautiful. I'm going to leave it there because it's a lot to talk about, and I have one left, and it's called Nesnas Kareen. So, Nesnas Kareen. This one, admittedly, is my least favourite of the three. I think Manish, Manishtana and Mandarava are completely outstanding. This one, to me, is the one that, although I know it's very important to print, falls a little bit by the wayside. I just think those two are so amazing that this one feels less exciting. I'm not trying to take away anything from Prin's creativity or anything, but this one is about some kind of folklore about a devilish creature that has one leg and a tail. It's kind of like devil angel or a devil that whispers in your ear to do bad things. And this one's, I would call it the gourmand of the three. 
This one has that coffee feeling that Prin seems to favour, which is not a bad thing. And I'll tell you the notes. It says it's saffron, frankincense, leather, cumin seeds, tobacco, dried apricot, animalic notes, cinnamon, fire and ash, and halva, or halva, which is, you know, that sesame seed type food. I've, I love it, actually. <laughs> I love it. I used to eat it all the time. I should get some of that. This one to me is kind of in the same realm as SM Cafe and Burning Ben because the coffee part of it is very strong. Given I need to wear this one a lot as well, I've always put my focus on the other two, so maybe this isn't justified, but my impression of this is there's no coffee listed, but I feel it. This has a really nice leathery spiciness to it which SM Cafe didn't have. It had the leather, but this has got an added spice to it. This is the one that I find the most difficult to describe of the three because it's touching on gourmand, but it's kind of leathery, cool tobacco and woody at the same time. This one kind of, for me, mingles in with a couple of the other ones in the Strangers line, but I know there are some exquisite materials in here, so I need to wear this one more. Admittedly, I do. But yeah, I'm going to end it there and I'm going to tell you some exciting news that Prin told me about just today. Just to sum up, I want to say that I feel like Strangers Perfumery are a great jump off point if you want to start to delve into niche because they're affordable, they're different from anything on the market but not too crazy that they're scary. Longevity to me is medium all around. Some last longer than others, of course. The woodier ones are gonna last longer than the citrusy ones. I get about six hours out of a lot of them when I've tried them on my skin. I've not tried all of them fully because, you know, there's 14 of them. So I'm still learning them. And with Prasanna, this is a little bit more of a luxury thing. There's very exquisite ingredients in there. These are extra as well, so they are higher concentration than strangers. I just appreciate them for being creative and bringing something else to the table for a super independent brand. And I love supporting and talking about super independent brands like this. So lucky enough to work with them every day and talk to people about them. It's great. And just a little bit of exciting news because I spoke to Print today. He is planning to do Cigar Rum, which is one of his best sellers and most popular ones. He's planning to do an extra version or a more intensified version of it and tweak the formula a little bit. And he is also considering doing a gourmand line, which is quite exciting because looking at Sangre Dolce and SM Cafe, Prince take on gourmand is not the traditional vanilla cupcake type thing. So I'm going to leave it there because I've spoken enough tonight about everything. I hope you guys like this video and just thank you Prin for sending me these lovely gifts and letting me talk about your perfumes. I'm a fan. So I hope you guys have a lovely evening. I'm out on my know. Trying to make the world more better one video at a time. Now time for editing this long ass video. Love you guys. Bye.